Today, I've got an awesome sweater upcycle for you. It is getting cold out and it's time to start bundling up. Working with a sweater and upcycling it into something new is really awesome and fun, but that sweater can do all kinds of crazy things. It can start unraveling, it can stretch out, etc. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to deal with all of those problems that might arise when you're working with a sweater. Because we are gonna take some sleeves of a sweater and turn them into leg warmers. Leg warmers are having a fashion moment right now, so it's really fun to see them styled with short skirts and little cute shoes, but they're also super functional. So if you don't have a maxi coat and it's cold out, you can totally throw on a pair of leg warmers and keep the bottom of your legs warm too. So let's start creating. To create these upcycled leg warmers, you're going to need a sweater you wanna make into some leg warmers, a little bit of one inch elastic, and a sewing machine or a serger. So the first thing we need to do is chop the sleeves off of the sweater. And sleeves are great to use because they already have a rib knit finished edge on one end. So I'm cutting the sleeve off right at the seam. So I'm just going to chop into it a little bit and then follow the seam all the way around the sleeve. And now I have the sleeve separated from the sweater and I need to do the same thing to the other sleeve. So now we've got two sleeves to turn into leg warmers and there's a good chance they're not gonna be the exact size that you want them. They could be way too big or maybe they're just right. And the way we're gonna find that out is by trying them on. So let's try them on and check out what we need to do to make these awesome. So I've got the sleeve and we're going to try it on. I'm gonna keep the rib knit at my ankle down here so that way it's nice and fitted and it's not gonna let any of the snow in or any of that cold. So I've got that where I want it. Um, I think this is a little big for me, so I would like it a little more fitted. So I'm gonna hold it and just pin it up the side a little bit where the seam is. And you could also make them shorter if you want them shorter. And if you don't want it tight at the ankle, you can totally cut that rib knit off and like let it be flowy. So there's also a trend in leg warmers where they are flowy at the bottom and you can put them over your shoe. So then you would just do the same thing we're gonna do to the top and the bottom. So I've got that pinned up and I know exactly how much I want to take in. You're also gonna notice that I left it loose at the top and that's because we're going to put elastic in there so that way it's nice and secure. So that means the leg warmer is also going to get shorter. So however wide your elastic is that you wanna put in the top plus a half inch, um, so I'm just gonna roughly fold that down about an inch and a half so I know how tall it's going to be. So right now you can decide, do I want to make this come up so it's like perfectly fitted on the leg? Do I want some bunch in it? It's totally up to you and your preference for creating the leg warmer. And while we have it on, we are going to measure our leg with the elastic. So I always like to take the elastic, put it around my leg, give it a little pull, you know, we want it comfortable, but we want it tight enough that it's going to stay up. Leave about an extra inch so we can overlap our elastic to sew it later and then go ahead and cut it. Now we have a piece of elastic cut for the top of the leg warmer. So looking at this leg warmer, I'm going to make it shorter. So I am going to roll this down to where I want it. So I think I like that amount of gather in it. And I'm just gonna put a couple pins at the top and then we'll measure out our distance for the casing when it's on the table and then cut off the extra. There we go. Now we're ready to take it off. And you don't need to do this twice because we're going to use this leg warmer as a pattern for the other one. So now that we have the leg warmer all pinned up, grab your chalk and we need to mark where the pins are. First, I'm gonna mark the top because I'm going to be making the leg warmer shorter. So if you are too, go ahead and mark the top of it first. Do both sides. And if you're not making it shorter, you can skip this step. Now I'm gonna take out the pins where I had it, where I was making it shorter. And now we're gonna open it up. And now what I wanna do is mark where the pins are for me taking it in. So now I know exactly where my new sewing line needs to be. So now that we have our new sew line, I am ready to cut off some fabric. But before we do that, we need to make sure we leave a little bit extra on the outside so that way we have a seam allowance. I'm going to leave about three eighths of an inch, but you can leave a half inch, an inch, whatever you like. You just need to leave something extra so that way you have a seam allowance. 
There we go. So now we have made our leg warmer narrower. So now I wanna cut some off the top so I can make the leg warmer shorter. So this white line here is where I want the leg warmer to end when I'm wearing it, but I need to add an inch and a half for my casing so that way I can get the elastic in there. So we're gonna draw an additional inch and a half outside of that line, and now I can cut on that line. And there we go. Now we have this sleeve all prepped to turn into a leg warmer. Now that we have this one cut to size, we're going to use it as a template to make sure the other one turns out the exact same size. When you place it on, you wanna make sure you're lining up everything perfectly. Feel free to pin these layers together. Make sure you don't stretch it while you're putting it down. And once you have it pinned in place, grab your scissors and just cut right along the side of it, just like you would a pattern piece. And after you've done that, remove your pins and then you will have two leg warmers. Now it's time to turn these into wearable leg warmers so that way we can stay warm and cozy. And remember, we need to go over specific techniques so the sweater fabric doesn't fall apart or stretch out. So I'm gonna go over one leg warmer in detail and then you'll just do the same thing to the other one. So the first step is going to be sewing up the side of this right sides together. And we sew up this knit fabric because we have cut into it, it is gonna start fraying and unraveling like crazy, especially if you pull it. So be real careful not to pull it because there's a good chance it's just gonna unravel and fall apart. So the best option for putting sweaters back together is really a serger. But if you don't have a serger, that's okay. I'm also gonna show you exactly how to do it on the home sewing machine, and I'm gonna be demoing it on the home sewing machine as well. But if you do have a serger, you're gonna wanna make the pressure on your foot less, you're gonna wanna make your stitch length longer, and you're gonna wanna make your differential feed less. Always practice it out on a scrap of the sweater first because all fabrics react differently. And just play with those settings a little bit and then you'll be golden. So I have my sewing machine set up to a three-step zigzag, also known as a broken zigzag. And I have the length at 7.5 and the width at six. So I'm gonna start here and see how it reacts with my fabric. So you should have a length and a width adjustment on your machine for this stitch. So you can play around with that till you get it perfect. And if you don't have a broken zigzag, you can always use an overcasting stitch as well, or you can also try a regular zigzag stitch. So you have some more options. So just play around with a little scrap and see what works best on your machine. So we're using a zigzag stitch so our fabric will still stretch. You cannot use a straight stitch in this. There's a good chance it's just gonna pop and fall right apart on you. Now we're going to be creating a seam with the zigzag stitch. So we're sewing two pieces of fabric together and we're gonna test it out here and see how it reacts. So let's go ahead, give it a try. Go ahead and back stitch as well. And right away, if you notice it not moving through smoothly, I want you to make your stitch length longer. You can also make the pressure on the foot less. So let's go ahead and make the pressure on the foot a little less as well. And we're gonna notice it moving through the machine way easier. When you get to the end of your test strip, back stitch and cut, and let's check it out. So you can see I've got that broken zigzag stitch here on the edge. It's not stretching out the fabric. The fabric's still laying nice and flat, which is important. And if I stretch it, it still stretches. There's no popping of the stitches. So that's really important to test out as well. So I made a few adjustments throughout to make it just right. And now it's time to sew up our leg warmer. So I have my fabric placed right sides together and I'm starting back in the seam allowance towards the rib neck cuff. So I'm gonna start back here, back stitch, and just work my way all the way up to the top, keeping everything nice and flat. Back stitch at the end and cut. So I have it inside out, and I know it's a little hard to see. This fabric is pretty 
spongy and puffy, so my red thread is actually kind of hidden deep inside here. But I tried to use a bright thread for you guys to see here. So we've got that three-step zigzag. It still stretches, not popping. That's the most important part. And it's laying nice and flat. It didn't stretch it and pull it out and make it wavy. Now it's time to create the casing for our elastic. Next, we want to finish the raw edge here on the sweater knit so that way it doesn't fray and fall apart anymore. I'm just going to be using the zigzag stitch. Obviously, you could serge it, use a overcast stitch or a regular zigzag as well. So I'm going to place the raw edge of the sweater in the center of the foot so that way the stitch goes on and off the fabric, binding it together so that way it's not going to fall apart. Make sure you're not stretching this while you're sewing it. We don't want it to stretch out. When you get back to where you started, back stitch and cut. Now that we have the top edge finished so it's not going to fall apart, it's time to create our casing. Now what we want to do is fold down the sweater an inch and a half. So grab the ruler, make sure you're doing an inch and a half all the way around. Pin it, make sure you're using glass pins so that way you can iron right over them. Now that we have it all pinned down, I'm going to iron it so that way we get a nice little crease here and it'll be easier to sew when we're sewing down the edge of the casing. So I have the end of this on a sleeve board. So that way I can just work my way all the way around it, flattening it out. And there we go. Now we're nice and pressed. I'm going to start at the seam. Make sure you're back stitching. We're going to work our way all the way around the top, going right over our existing zigzag stitches. Be sure you're not pulling it. When you get back to where you started, leave about an inch opening, back stitch, and cut. Now we have the casing sewn down. Let's take a look at it. So I have that broken zigzag stitch going right over the other one that's there, so nothing is going to fall apart. And you'll notice the fabric's not waving, it's not pulling, it's not puckering, everything's nice and flat. And right here, I have my opening, so that way we can get the elastic in there. To put the elastic in, I'm going to take a big safety pin and put the elastic on the safety pin. And now we're going to push it through the casing all the way to the other side. And there's a good chance that your elastic is smaller than the actual top, so don't lose your elastic inside here. And then when we get back to the opening, remove your safety pin. And now what we're going to do is overlap the elastic, stitch it down, and then we can close up our casing. I'm going to zigzag these two pieces of elastic together, making sure I'm back stitching. Go over it a few times, secure it, and cut. So this is what it should look like when you have the two pieces of elastic stitched together. And we use the zigzag stitch so that way it's not going to break and fall apart when it stretches. So now we need to sew shot this opening here and I'm going to be using that broken zigzag again. Just going over that same line of stitching that's here, closing it up just like I did when I was creating the casing. And you get back to where you started, back stitch and cut. So now that we are all finished with one leg warmer, let's check it out. So you can see we have that really nice casing up here with the elastic in it. It stretches really nice. It's going to hold up on our leg well. And we've got the edges finished with the three-step zigzag. And we also created the casing with our three-step zigzag. And then if I flip it over, you can see the seam that we have here. And we created that with the three-step zigzag as well. Let's turn it right side out and check it out. And there we go. We have got a little leg warmer. You could roll up the bottom if you like as well. Now you're going to do the exact same steps to the other one and then we'll try them on. I've got the leg warmers on. Let's check them out. 
So we've got our nice elastic up here. It's nice and comfortable. I can move them down lower or higher depending on the look and warmth I want. We've got our rib knit down here at the bottom. I've got it rolled up right now. You could also unroll it. These were such a fun, easy, great project, and I just love upcycling. Thrifting's fun, and you find really cool stuff, and it's inexpensive. It probably would've cost me more to buy this fabric from the store than upcycling it from a sweater. Thanks so much for watching Sewing Anastasia today. I hope you enjoyed creating leg warmers from a sweater. If you have any questions about it, leave it down below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you give it some applause, and let me know what video you wanna see next. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you subscribe to Sewing Anastasia and hit the notification bell so you know when the new videos come out. And if you are already a subscriber, well, these videos are for you. Thank you for watching today. And don't forget, you can come into my studio in Chicago and take classes with me, or you guys can check out the Sewing Anastasia Sewing Academy online. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.